Welcome. In this episode, we have an ITX water-cooled PC build with an RTX 4080 on the AM5 platform in the Meshlicious small form factor case. We will build a custom loop using water cooling components from EKWB, water cool, alpha cool, and use heat killer soft tubing in black. We will fill the custom loop and perform testing to obtain thermal, power, acoustic, and performance results. We will undervolt the 4080 and compare the wattage and frames per second to stock settings. This is the best their network and let's begin. The build begins with the EK Quantum Velocity 2 AM5 Nickel and Plexi version with the DVC PWM pump. What's in the box is the water block combo unit and some tools and thermal paste. The build is possible because this CPU block has an integrated DVC pump and a dedicated reservoir all combined into a single unit. Inside the unit, the DVC pump is covered by a piece of nickel plated brass. There are six total ports, two are dedicated fill ports, and there are two sets of inlets and outlets. And the reservoir can hold 66 milliliters. Our AM5 CPU has open cutouts in its integrated heat spreader for its capacitors. The AMD Ryzen 5 7600 is a 6 core 65 watt TDP CPU and the pins are on the motherboard rather than the back side of the CPU. The Gigabyte B650i Aorus Ultra is an ITX motherboard for the AM5 platform. The installation begins by dropping the CPU into the socket. This AM5 CPU uses an LGA socket where the pins are on the motherboard whereas AM4 had them on the back side of the CPU. Next, let's remove the stock CPU cooler brackets from the motherboard. Let's grab the Noctua NA STP G1 thermal paste guard for AM5 CPUs. Let's use the Noctua NT H2 thermal paste. EKWB is leveraging the AM5 backplate by having spring loaded torque screws integrated into the water block. An installation requires screwing in a counterclockwise rotation into the stock AM5 backplate of the CPU. While we are here so we can access the backside M.2 NVMe slot, let's first remove the five Phillips head screws securing the backplate to the motherboard and then the backplate itself. We can occupy all three M.2 NVMe slots on this AM5 motherboard and the PCIe 4.0 slot will still run at its maximum 16x speed. Let's install an ADATA XPG Gen 3 M.2 NVMe. After that, we can put back the motherboard backplate and the five Phillips head screws. Next, to access the remaining two M.2 NVMe slots, let's first remove the four Phillips head screws, the metallic heat sink, another Phillips head screw, and then the board to board BTB plug. On its underside, Let's install a PNY Gen 4 M.2 NVMe. Peel the plastic film and plug the BTB plug back into place. On the top side, let's install a Samsung 980 Pro Gen 4 M.2 NVMe. Placing the heatsink back along with the same four Phillips head screws. Next, let's socket in the front card, which includes the connection for the front panel power, and drop in the kit of 32GB G-Skill Flare X5 DDR5 6000 Mega Transfers Memory. This build will use black fittings from EKWB and Barrow. Let's add a pair of EKWB Torque Micro 90 degree adapters along with flex compression 13x10 fittings in black. We're using the SSUPD Meshlicious Small Form Factor 14.7 liter case. Let's install our motherboard into the case and plug in the PCIe 4.0 riser cable. We are using the ASUS Tough RTX 4080 housed in the Watercool Heat Killer 5 water block. Click on the link in the top right hand corner for the unbox, install, and thermal episode. After draining the water block, 
Mayhem's Blitz Phase 2 Cleaner and distilled water was used to help flush the block, but more cleaning was certainly required. So let's go ahead and open up the GPU block by first removing 5 Phillips head screws and the I.O. bracket, revealing two additional torque screws underneath. Then we can slide off the silver anodized aluminum housing. Followed by removing five torque screws around the top. And then another 14 torque screws around the cold plate. Removing the top. And placing it aside to be cleaned by soap and water. Placing the large single black o-ring aside. The metal jet plate happens to be shaped like a heart. Removing the plastic jet block. And placing that aside for cleaning. Next, we have the cold plate. Isopropyl alcohol is used to scrub and clean the cold plate. Keep in mind the alcohol should not be used on the acrylic. Once cleaned, we can put back the O-ring. And the plastic jet block. Followed by the metal jet plate. The top goes right back on along with the previous 19 Torx head screws. Followed by the silver anodized aluminum housing. Two Torx screws and the IO bracket with its five Phillips head screws. Let's replace the EKWB Torque 90 degree adapters and the Coolance Quick Disconnect UD3 male fittings with EKWB Torque Micro 90 degree adapter fittings and Flex Compression 13x10 fittings in black. We can then slide our RTX 4080 into the PCIe 4.0 riser cable slot in the case. We are using the Corsair 12 volt high power cable for use with their power supplies. We're using an AlphaCool ST30 280 millimeter full copper radiator with five inlet outlet port connections. Let's add an additional EKWB Torque micro 90 degree adapter fittings, a three-way joint, flex compression 13 by 10 fittings, and a drain port. On the end, let's add a barrel manual exhaust valve. On the other side, let's add a barrel coolant sensor. To cool the 280 millimeter radiator, we will be using two Be Quiet Silent Wing Pro 4 140 millimeter fans. Let's install the fans first by pushing the radiator screws through the case and fans so they can hang in place. The radiator screws are 30 millimeters long to accommodate the 25 millimeter thick fans. Then we can slide in the alpha cool 30 millimeter thick copper radiator into place. From there, we can then screw in each of the eight radiator screws. For the runs, we'll use water cool heat killer EPDM 13 by 10 soft tubing in black. Since the water block pump Reservoir combo is one unit. We only need three runs to complete the loop. The coolant will outflow from the combo unit down into the radiator, then into the GPU, and then up and around back down into the combo unit.
we are using the Corsair SF750 SFX Type 4 power supply to power this ITX build. The fill is next, so let's connect the pump to save the power and also put a jumper on the main 24 pin power cable. We're using a coolant with low conductivity, Mayhem's X1 Eco Coolant in Clear. After the fill, let's add another Barrow manual exhaust valve. Next, let's install the Aqua Computer Quadro to control the loop. Let's plug in the motherboard cable, coolant sensor, ambient temp sensor, pump, fans, and Molex connection for power. Let's plug in the rest of the cables, including the 8-pin CPU cable, front panel power cable to the motherboard front card, front panel USB 3.0 and USB 2.1 cables, and then the 24-pin main ATX cable. Stay tuned as the testing is coming up right now. Although shown without as mesh covers on screen, to obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway stress test and the benchmarks for Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 were with the mesh delicious case completely enclosed, ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. As stock, the GPU and CPU core temperatures were 53 and 51 degrees Celsius respectively. With the case open and without the sides on, there was only a 1 degree difference in GPU temperature and the CPU temperatures were the same. As stock, the GPU, memory, and hotspot temperatures were 57 and 60 degrees Celsius respectively. During the test, the coolant temperature settled in the range between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius. Undervolting the car to 0.95 millivolts and adding 135 megahertz to the core to arrive at a targeted 2730 megahertz core clock, the CPU and GPU power usage combined for a total of 293 watts, resulting in 71 frames per second. Compared to stock, this is a 17% reduction in wattage with a corresponding 3% reduction in FPS. For Red Dead Redemption 2, with the preset to favor quality maxed, a stock 4K with DLSS off, GPU and CPU core temperatures were 53 and 70 degrees Celsius respectively. Undervolting the card at 4K DLSS quality, the CPU and GPU power uses combined for a total of 284 watts, resulting in 118 frames per second. Compared to stock, undervolting results in a 20% reduction in wattage, the corresponding 2% decrease in FPS. For Cyberpunk 2077 patch 2.0, overdrive mode and DLSS 3.0 on, a stock 4K with DLSS quality, GPU and CPU core temperatures were 52 and 65 degrees Celsius respectively. Undervolting the card at 4K DLSS performance, the CPU and GPU power uses combined for a total of 277 watts resulting in 81 frames per second. Compared to stock, undervolting results in a 22% reduction in wattage with a corresponding 5% decrease in FPS. For testing, the Be Quiet Silent Wing Pro 4 fans were set to 100% speed, approximately 1000 RPM, and the DDC pump was set to 50% speed. At this combined RPM level, the approximate and average noise was recorded to be between 35 and 40 decibels. Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos like this, including video card and water cooling component teardowns, unboxings, and thermal testing for water cooled PC builds. Thank you, and I'll see you at the next episode.